here. Okay, no spoilers. Put it here. Ah. No spoilers. Ah. No spoilers. Ah, there was <laughs> a question. Guys. I hope you guys didn't look at it. Okay, so thank you for coming to uh, the very first presentation of this group. Um, I know it's early in the morning, but I really appreciate that uh, we're all here to learn something new. And what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about supplements in Dragon Boat, the imposter syndrome, and also taking ownership of one's success. Okay, so I want to start off by asking you guys a question. What is the most common supplement that is used or consumed for performance optimization? What do you guys think? You guys can just say it out loud or you guys can type it out in the chat. Beta alanine or else Sugar. creatine. Coffee. Creatine. Protein Caffeine. supplements. Sorry, what, Alex, what did you say? Protein supplements. Okay, okay. Anybody else? Caffeine. Caffeine, correct. Caffeine. <laughs> good job, good job, Megan. Good job, Kevin. 1.4 billion cups of coffee are poured daily. Okay. Even I'm, I'm drinking coffee right now, and odds are some of you have probably already had your first cup of coffee this morning. All right. And the most common thing that you hear about coffee, right, is that, oh, I need coffee in the morning to function. Don't talk to me before I have my first cup of coffee. I need coffee to study or it keeps me focused in class. Coffee is life, right? But what I'm trying to get at is that we take supplements every day, every hour, already in our lives in order to feel like we're performing at our best, right? So coffee is one example. Um, another one is even alcohol or beer, okay? We take it recreationally so that we can go and have a good time so that we can get conversations flowing. Do we need beer? No. Also, alcohol was considered to be a banned substance in the Olympics since 2018. And even now in archery, it's still banned. And what, why is this? Well, people consume alcohol in order to calm their nerves, right? So when it comes to archery, it makes a lot of sense that you want to be as calm as possible before you take that shot. Um, okay, so, but the problem about supplements that I've found over the years is that people are uncomfortable taking supplements for quote unquote sport performance but they're comfortable about taking it for quote unquote daily living performance, right? You're willing to take coffee to study more, but you're not willing to take caffeine in order to improve your time on the erg, okay? There's this delusion that comes into play when it comes to sport performance. And the main reasons for this, okay? Okay, the main reasons why people don't take sport um, supplements, one, there's a health concern, okay? So some of them are afraid that it might be bad for their body, there's a supplement out there that people claim that will make you go bald, okay? Um, the other common thing that I'm hearing is budgetary concerns. So look, I don't have money to spend on this, all right? Like, like fuck it. Uh, third one is uh, motivation, okay? Some people end up buying the supplements, but when they have them, they end up forgetting to consume it or to eat it on a day-to-day -day basis, or they just leave it in the cupboard for months and months and months until they get expired. But the biggest issue that I see that's common, like in a lot of uh, Dragon Boat athletes, is the imposter syndrome, okay? People are afraid of taking, or not afraid, but people are uncomfortable taking supplements because they think that, oh shit, am I getting stronger because of me? Or am I getting stronger because I'm consuming supplements? So I want you guys to meet Alfonso, okay? Alfonso, is training to become a Spanish U24 national team athlete. And he just pulled a sub 150, uh, but he feels he does not deserve the result, okay? I'm pretty sure uh, we, we've all met Alfonso at one point, or even we've been Alfonso at one point in our lives. And he says to himself that, I only did well because of my coaches. I, I only did well because I've been coming to practice regularly. I'm only doing well because I've been sleeping better. I'm only doing well because what? I stopped eating junk food. I'm taking these supplements. Basically he's saying, I'm only doing well because of these excuses, these external factors that he thinks that he has no control over, okay? And I'm pretty sure we do this all the time. I only did well because yada, yada, yada. 
All right, but fuck it, okay? Alfonso did well because he did well. It's as simple as that. And I really like this quote, okay? Responsibility finds a way and irresponsibility makes excuses. By using the term only, all right, you're, you're basically robbing yourself of the fact that you placed yourself into a position in order to achieve the goals uh, and to achieve success, all right? So by taking ownership of your successes, we can now see supplements as a tool that you can use in your arsenal to achieve your goals, as opposed to being a crutch. All right? There's no reason to attribute all your successes to a cup of coffee. Just how it's, it's completely ridiculous to attribute all your successes because you slept well that night. All right, so the other, the other excuses that I'm hearing, uh, like uh, what about my health, right? About the money, yada, yada, yada. Or I'm too lazy to remember to take supplements. Uh, let's just address that really quick. Um, all the supplements that I'm going to mention, okay, uh, they're probably safer. They're, actually, they're 100% safer than uh, drinking alcohol, um, eating Big Macs, or uh, consuming Coca-Cola, right? Uh, but if you do have a medical condition, um, then you it'd be best that you go see your uh, doctor because the only issue that I could see is that you're not going to be able to process uh, these supplements. But if you do have a medical condition, like you shouldn't be drinking alcohol, right? And you shouldn't be consuming Big Macs or Coca-Cola. Uh, as for the, uh, the second uh, reasons why people don't take supplements is because of monetary issue. Uh, the supplements I'm going to mention here are cheaper than alcohol. <laughs> They're cheaper than a Big Mac and they're cheaper than Coca-Cola, okay? If you, can, if you can spend $70 on a night out drinking alcohol, you, you can definitely spend some money on, on these supplements. And the last one is the motivation uh, to consume or to eat the um, supplements that you've bought. And it, it's, it's important to uh, shift uh, the perception of supplements. And I don't like the, the word supplement because it sounds as if it's unnecessary, all right? And in, in a way it is, but if you bought them, it's like, it's like brushing your teeth, okay? Brushing your teeth in our society was considered as essential. Hence, we've all brushed our teeth this morning and yesterday night, okay? But flossing for some odd reason in our society is considered to be optional. And I I'd, I'd bet at least half of you haven't flossed yesterday. Okay, so it, it's, it's to shift that perception that these supplements, like, they're important enough for me to remember to consume them. And if they're not important enough, then you're not going to take them on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? It's just shifting that perception. Also, flossing is very important, so please, please floss. Thank you. Okay, so let's get into... Um, the main stack that I want to talk about. I know dozens of supplements, but I narrowed it down to the three most important ones that I think will be beneficial to all of you when it comes to Dragon Ball performance. Okay, so the first one is creatine monohydrate. Okay, and I don't want to get into the science, like into like how it works in, in your cells or whatever, but basically creatine monohydrate will help you increase your output on short burst exercises. So anything that lasts less than 30 seconds. And if we think in the Dragon Boat terms, so what is this? It's your starts, right? If we can increase the output on our starts, that'd be fantastic. And also on our 200 meter races, which is about like 40, 45 seconds, right? Which is uh, 30 seconds to 45 seconds, that's the majority of the race. The other one, beta alanine. Uh, Ronald mentioned this. Uh, what it does, it just buffers your fatigue levels, okay? So if creatine monohydrate helps you um, continuously uh, output more power, beta alanine will help you uh, basically keep on going and push your fatigue levels further and further away so that you get tired later, okay? And so this would be incredibly beneficial for 500 meters and 2Ks because on the 500 meters, you're building up a lot of lactic acid, and by the end of it, you're burning, right? So if we could push it, your fatigue levels further and further away, then yeah, it would definitely help. And also for a 2K, because 2K is a fucking long race. Caffeine, 
Uh, we all take coffee. I, I think we all already felt the effects of coffee. It wakes you up, makes you ready to go, and wants you to like enjoy life a bit more and gets you super excited. So it would be beneficial for pretty much everything from the starts to 200 meters, 500 meters, 2 kids. Okay? So how do you eat uh, these supplements? Creatine monohydrate is very simple. It comes with a scoop, okay? And you take that scoop and you put it in water, juice, whatever, and then you just drink it and you forget about it. It's as simple as that, okay? One scoop a day, as long as you'd like, and you will feel and see the effects after 28 days of continuously feeding five grams or one scoop into your system. Uh, very important though, is you do not want to mix it with coffee. I forget the exact reason why, but the studies show that if you mix them together, okay, then you, you neutralize the effects of caffeine. Okay, so just take this, I don't know, at nighttime and drink your coffee in the morning. Uh, beta alanine, same thing, there's a scoop in here, you just take one scoop a day, every day, and you forget about it. And you'll also see the benefits after 28 days, right? And last one is coffee. I mean, you guys all drink coffee already, so I'm not going to teach you how to do that. But if you are going to uh, have a test or you have um, like a PR coming along or even you have a workout, uh, it takes about 30 minutes to kick in into your system. So just like, don't, don't just take it and then right away do your PR because it takes time to digest, right? So uh, ideally around 30 minutes before your actual workout. But remember, don't mix these, okay? All right, a lot of people at 22D, they're mixing them and they're basically wasting their money because it's not working if you mix them. So do not mix them. Question. Yes, sir. What does it, also Andrew has a question too, but I'll ask mine. Oh, sorry, I didn't see the chat, but did you uh, read it? Here, I'll, I'll read it. Andrew says, does the timing matter of when you take these supplements, i.e. before or after workout, et cetera? Right, right. So, so the most easy answer is no, it, it doesn't matter. Just, just, it doesn't matter. Just forget about it. Take it uh, whenever you can take it. Just don't mix them, these two. Uh, but if you want a more detailed answer is that if you want to be as efficient as possible, you would want to be taking uh, your creatine right after your workout uh, and it'll, because you're all pumped up and then it'll help the supplements to get into your muscles quote unquote quicker. But um, like the difference is so minute that it's probably it, it, like, I don't do it. I, I don't do it. All right. Other question. Yeah. So you say don't mix caffeine and creatine. Correct. But you also say you can drink them both in the same day. What I mean is like, don't mix them together as I put your creatine in your coffee or don't consume your creatine and your coffee within the span of like 30 minutes. All right. Cause there's something in the, in the coffee and the caffeine that seems to disintegrate the, the creatine. And so by the time it hits your digestive system, the creatine is no longer there. Okay. Victoria has a question. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Same as mine, but she wants to know what the uh, time gap is. Minimum time gap. Uh, between ca caffeine and, and creatine? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think I believe it was about 30 minutes, but just what I would suggest is just to take your uh, your creatine at night because you're not going to be drinking coffee at night. Mm -hmm. Right. True. So like, like what I do is I just take this before bed and I drink my coffee during the day and uh, bada bing, bada boom, no issues. Oh, wait, I have a comment. Yes, uh, ma'am. For caffeine, I think everyone is different because sometimes for me. I'm super yep. sensitive, so I would recommend if you're going to try caffeine, don't do it on the race day. Do it for training. Practice first. Practice your caffeine intake. Oh, yes. yeah, that, that is also a very good point, is that you don't want to be suddenly introducing all these supplements like two days before your competition. right? What I'm trying to get at is we want to establish habits over time. And so now is actually a perfect time to experiment with your supplements. We have no races. There's no pressure. And so see how much coffee, like uh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get there, but see how much coffee um, is enough for you to feel the effects of coffee, right? All right, all right uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably get there right in the next slide actually. But, but remember, remember, okay, it's really frustrating because there's a lot of people 22D that are mixing these two and it's just like, dude, don't do that, okay? Also, if you have, um, you buy a pre-workout online, 
And in the pre-workout, the, the claiming they have creatine, it, it, it's a scam because again, caffeine and creatine do not mix. And it's a marketing ploy and yada, yada, yada. They just wanna find things to make you spend your money. Okay, great. Next one, cost. Okay, for you cheapos out there, I, I don't understand, okay? This thing is $31, okay? If I go to, okay, when I take Kitty out to go to McDonald's, which we really shouldn't be doing, like two Big Macs is 30 bucks. Like, what? guys, please. <laughs> There's no excuse Here's for no monetary problem. issues. <laughs> if you're gonna go out to eat one meal versus this that will last you a whole year, guys, come on, please, please. Same thing, this this is a small container, but um, the bigger container is, is uh, roughly $40. Okay, that's another, that's two Big Macs and like two ice creams each. Guys, it's not rocket science, okay? Don't go to McDonald's and spend some money if you'd like to on things that will benefit you in the long run. As for caffeine, this Costco, super cheap instant coffee, you're probably paying way too much already for your Starbucks, okay? So, cost. In my opinion, it should be no excuses, all right? Don't eat McDonald's. <laughs> Says the guy who eats McDonald's. Exactly. Other benefits. Um, so uh, in, in case you guys uh, wanted to learn a bit more uh, about these supplements, um, and some of you are still students, okay? And th these ones are just dubious and just to put them in for, for fun. Okay, like creatine seems to improve your short-term memory. And also caffeine improves your short-term memory. So you could also argue that these supplements will help you in your studying, eh, maybe. Um, if you're taking creatine monohydrates, uh, you can expect some weight gain. Um, what is the weight gain though, okay? It is not fat, it is not bloating. Well, it's not fat, it's not suddenly new muscle. It's just that your muscles are getting swelled up with water, okay? and. There's uh, some research saying that the, the increase in water in your muscles is what causes you to become quote unquote stronger. Okay, so you can expect maybe a three pound gain in 28 days. And then after that, it should just level off, right? And then if you ever get off creatine, it'll probably take you a week in order for you to shed uh, the, the, new, the new weight that you've uh, gained from the extra, extra water. Uh, beta alanine, if you take it, um, you will feel like a weird tingling sensation in your skin. It's really hard to describe. So you probably just got to try it for yourself. Uh, some people absolutely hate it. And if that's the case, then what you can do is spread out your creatine um, portions throughout the day to mitigate the amount of uh, tingling that you'll feel. But I absolutely love the feeling. Okay, so I take like two scoops and it just like gets me all fired up. My skin, my scalp's like super like, it's not itchy, but it's like tingly, you know? And it just makes me... Uh, really excited for the workout. Okay, so how much can I expect to gain? All right, like like I, I'm buying the shit and I'm eating the shit. Like how much? What will I get out of it? Well, for me, I got about four to five seconds on a 500 meter after 28 days. But you got to also remember there's compounded effects, a compounded interest over time, right? That's only after 28 days. Um, Odds are over the course of a lifetime, there's many, many, many seconds, many pounds into, into my bench, many, many, many benefits basically. Um, so, but it will be different from person to person. So it's for you to discover on your own, to figure out, play around with. Okay, so quick summary. One, uh, I just, I, if there's a few things I want you guys to remember is that it's time to take ownership of our successes, okay? If you are doing well, it's not, there, there are no excuses about why you're doing well. You're doing well because you're doing well and you set yourself onto the right path. And so just keep on going, all right? Don't, don't, don't rob away uh, any feelings of, of success. And also this applies to your failures, right? Don't make excuses for your failures. Own, own up to them and learn from them. Supplements, are a tool, okay? And they're not a crutch, right? Like you're not fast because you take creatine, okay? Right? You're fast, not only because you took creatine, but because you took creatine and because you've been eating well, because you've been sleeping well, yada, 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 yada. And finally, 
if you still choose not to uh, consume or eat supplements, that's perfectly fine as well. But let's, I, I want you guys to get, get into the mindset of finding ways to improve, um, basically improve your lifestyle to reach your goals and to get closer and closer to your goals. If you're still uncomfortable taking these supplements, that's perfectly fine. But there's a rule that I've learned, and I forget who told me this rule. It's called the 1% better rule, is that try to find improvements in your life that you can prove by 1%, okay? So let's say you're sleeping six hours a night and you feel like groggy. There's something there that you can improve on. You can maybe improve it by sleeping more by an additional 30 minutes, right? Or maybe you could find a way to regulate your sleep better where you're sleeping earlier or sleeping at a regular time and waking up at a regular time. It's like finding these small things, right? Like for example, for me, I eat a lot of hamburgers and McDonald's and I, I would like to stop that. So what I'm gonna do for the next, uh, well onwards is not going out as much and saving on my money and eating better. So like finding these small things that you can do to improve your life, all right? It doesn't need to be supplements. I'm just saying it's just super easy and convenient to do. And yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. Sorry? Very high quality presentation. Oh, 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 well, thank you, thank you. If you guys have any questions, uh, yeah, just let me know. We can talk about it. We can talk about it now if you guys want. Okay, cool, workout time.